I've been in touch with all of the militias and underground groups that I get a hold of, as far as I can reach. The general idea is that, yes, be ready. Be ready to take action. You may be called on by our very own military to assist in securing a power plant, making sure the waterworks don't get blowed up, this sort of thing. Uh, so there's a combination in there's combinations in this that even the bad guys uh, weren't prepared for. Okay. It's sort of like uh, if you read the Bible, uh, <clears throat> the devil goes around killing people, and uh, the believers are cheating by raising raising them from the dead. That sort of thing. Well, the military uses tactics similar to that in terms of not cheating fair. Uh, the ideology is that there's a standoff, meaning that they won't, they would not make it. There's not enough of them to take the forces that are already deployed, and those are being reinforced. So, uh, you also have a contingent in Canada. Same deal. Uh, in combination with this, the addressment of the troops that I made, is being presented to command levels. So the lawful and unlawful order uh, in terms of engagement of civilians by a military authority um, is negated in terms of the fact that they're not allowed to. Field manual, military code of justice, then to go along with it, the majority, and I'm talking, no, 80% or better, agree with us. They are tired, the military in general, are tired of uh, being the bad guys. They want to be the good guys and to be seen as such, not just here, but worldwide. The only manner in which to do that is to make sure that they are a principle in reestablishing the freedoms we used to have and have had or started with uh, in such a way that it reverts in terms of authority to we the people as it should have been. So there's a lot going on, and that's kind of that's convoluted, and it's got a lot of information in it. But that's basically where things are at at this point. Right. Okay. Now, I another thing I've noticed here, and you know, I, I haven't really looked into the story too much, but I also understand you received a phone call about this earlier today, and uh, that would be the... Uh, What's been in the mainstream the last couple of days, at least, it kind of flashed across my screen as I was shutting the TV off from somebody else leaving it on. But um, there's there's issues going on with um, uh, the uh, with the Secret Service, um, you know, stating how they they're they're. Uh, being uh, arrested or detained or brought up on charges for things. But then I also saw something uh, regarding the uh, CIA having to uh, do things such as... Uh, uh, the original report I saw said that the CIA had to escort or shorten Mr. Obama's uh, agenda that he was... or, or wherever he was at <laughs> they had to escort him home because his uh, his guys had been arrested or something now do you know or have any information on that like I said I haven't followed it completely because it all I just happened to get up and turn the TV off because somebody had left it on so I didn't catch the whole thing okay um, I got a report from one friend uh, that we both know and then uh, did a little check uh, having the time to do so, and uh, come to find out that's basically uh, what happened. Now, there's parts of this that uh, people don't understand. One of those is that any dictator has to have uh, close to him uh, what would be considered a large group, a uh, small army, however you want to look at that, of people loyal to the individual only. Mm-hmm. The effort uh, by Obama is to uh, cause that to happen. Therefore, denigration or um, uh, reduction of uh, the honor and office of the Secret Service and Secret Service agents 
uh, has been perpetrated directly by the president in order to accomplish that particular goal. The problem is, is that uh, there was also some explosions. Yeah, I Secret heard about that. Well, the Secret Service was aware of it and ready to stop them. Okay. They allowed it to continue simply because uh, they were being uh, stated as being uh, r uh, as uh, running around whorehouses, etc., doing drugs and all this, which is something I know for a fact is not true. Mm -hmm. um, so when you uh, take somebody's reputation and trash it in that fashion and you foster um, artificial and fraudulent charges uh, and make them look bad, then you can replace the contingent or uh, detail that is uh, directly responsible for the uh, uh, safety and security of the president. And he can get his little group of his own choosing around him. So basically, he's, it's just another attempt to uh, try and pr to cover his own butt. No, no, well, it's, it's a combination of that and false flag. Uh, these are, the false flag ideology is very common. Um, to give you an example, uh, the majority of these explosions that were seen in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan around, right next to mosques were more than obvious to me, because I was in explosives, uh, being uh, of the nature of either uh, CIA, Mossad, or some other covert operation. Uh, we've been doing this for, for years and years to displace people they wouldn't go along with whatever little plan the bankers had in mind. Now, you have to remember, each and every last person, to include the president, are primarily puppets of the financial powers that, uh, I believe it was, uh, I forget who it was that mentioned it, but uh, that there was a power out there everybody was afraid of, and consequently they uh, didn't mention it. Uh, and even though they knew it was there, and mm -hmm. some had been directly threatened by it, okay, right. these people are the cabal. These are the agents of the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, and the central banking system who, uh, by whatever means, means necessary, and it does not matter what the expense is to obtain the goal of absolute control. The absolute control, because the central banking system is now in trouble, has been uh, <laughs> almost deleted, actually. It's at very low levels. The other part of it is is that the alliance of nations, this is, these are the unaligned nations, right. have created their own central banking system. This means that uh, we can no longer go to a small foreign country take what we want that we need for value and leave. It means that the cabal, the financial system, and this includes not only the United States but Europe as well, cannot function outside of their own limitations. Whatever money that is already in the system, that's the limit. They cannot acquire uh, further funds. Now, that goes to a combination of world banking and a bunch of other things that uh, also is rather intricate in terms of trying to explain it. Mm -hmm. That's basically the situation. Okay. Um, Drake, if you don't mind, actually, my uh, our, our co my co-host here would, would love to ask you a question or two. That's fine. Well, Spirit? Go ahead, Tom. Yes, uh, Drake, I was just wanting to ask you a simple question. How involved are American Indians in what's going on? Because I'm in touch with uh, three or four chiefs that I speak with on a regular basis, and they're talking about a lot of the same things that you're talking about and have been since October of last year. So is there any details you can give on that? Um, we're looking for... Um we're waiting on confirmation, paper, paperwork, and documentation from the um, uh, great, uh, let's see, what did they say? It was the Great uh, Fire Council. Okay. And the chief, chief of the council was the person I, I was uh, on the phone with. 
They would like to uh, align with us in our efforts for freedom. They would also like to align with us um, personally to include include in a in the manner that they have documentation that uh, precedes what we have, uh, so that the whole of the Americas can be um, reset to the original documentation. And um, personally, I fully agree with it because it states the same things that are, it, sta it states things better than our Constitution and founding documents can. Uh, it's more, a little more complete. And one thing people don't understand is that the idea of a structure from chief down uh, is a, a matter um, of importance that would be close to a religious belief in terms of honoring what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to be and things of this nature, which is which goes back to the earlier days when I grew up, uh, and any adult was allowed to uh, express to any child, "Hey, cool it. You're not doing the right thing, and you know it. Behave." And the child would comply for two reasons. They knew what mom and dad would do to them if mom and dad found out. But the other part was that they had the basis of the set of values required to be sociable, to be uh, productive, a proactive person, and actually, you know, think about what you're doing before you do it type of thing. So, uh, yes, we're in touch with the tribal councils of the Americas, and uh, we're looking, as I said, uh, for the documentation as soon as it's available. Um, that's primarily all we're waiting for. Now, uh, they would like to use some of the processes that we have used uh, in conjunction with that paperwork. Um, I don't feel that there's any way that uh, anyone can deny the, the uh, authenticity and reality of what it offers. So. It's in progress. Drake, I actually have a meeting tonight with the uh, tribal council. So you're talking about uh, original treaties that were signed as far back as 1631 when you say paperwork uh, that they are in possession of, uh, treaties that were abrogated ever since Europeans came here. If, if I'm reading what you're saying correctly, is that correct? or? Yes. Yeah. That's exactly correct. And, and uh the further part of that is that if they, um, there are certain um, documentation that was uh, issued from the America's Tribal Council to the um, heads of state in Europe who did not object to the paperwork, which is and was at that point an act of acceptance of everything in the paperwork. So therefore, it supersedes Magna Carta and all those. And like I said, I I'm just real, real antsy right now, waiting for that to show up. <laughs> uh, that will basically uh, assist not only our process, but it goes even to greater depth in terms of uh, the reality of being able to uh, take care of the problems that we've got. Okay. Did that answer your question, or did you have some more? Well, the, the, I just want to say the um, so, uh, chief that I know, uh, when he was doing an eagle dance at a, a powwow, an admiral was there, and the admiral said to the entire audience when he was dressing them that the two-row wampum is the supreme law of the land. And I was just wondering if you knew anything about the two-row wampum, Drake. Uh, only minorly. I've not gotten uh, fully uh, invested. Um, as you can tell, I uh, have a tendency to be extraordinarily busy uh, dealing with a variety of things. And uh, as I am able to uh, have the time, I will get into that further. But at this point, uh, superficially only. Okay. All right. Uh, thank, you for, thank you for letting me ask you that question. All right. Um, it seems that we should be uh, about a break time. Uh, am I correct there, uh, Spirit Wolf? 
This is Dave, and my dear, I have a song already lined up. Yay. Welcome back.